there is a missing dimension in world affairs. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about that missing dimension. Because people all over the world know there's something wrong. But whatever it is that's wrong, it's organized. And it's not getting any better, it's getting worse. And so, the subtitle for this presentation is Where We've Been, Where We Are, and Where We're Going. There is a missing dimension in world affairs. And I'm going to show you what that is. The word fascism. If you go to the World Book Encyclopedia and look up fascism, the word is fascism, World Book Encyclopedia, and look up the word fascism, you will see that under life under fascism, <clears throat> Starts off with the political life. In most cases, fascists have come to power after the nation has suffered an economic collapse, a military defeat, or some other disaster. My God, that's us in America. Uh, economic collapse, military defeats, some other disaster. The fascists win mass support by pro promising to revive the economy and restore national pride. They may also appear appeal to the fear of communism or the hatred of Jews or other minorities. In time, fascists may gain control of the government through peaceful elections or by force. After the fascist power uh, party takes power, after the fascist party takes power, its members replace men and women in the executive, judicial, and legislative branches of government. And in most cases, one individual, usually a dictator, with great popular appeal, becomes the leader of the government. Fascists permit no other political parties, no opposition to their policies. The fascist desire for national glory leads to an increase in military spirit and the build-up of the armed forces. After the military forces become strong enough, they may invade and occupy other countries. Sound uh, familiar? These organizations, which consist of both workers and employees, are called corporations. Fascism is corporatism. We call it corporate fascism. In reality, these corporations are controlled by government. A fascist country is sometimes referred to as the corporate state. And personal liberty, your freedoms and liberty, is severely limited under a fascist government. The government also controls the newspapers, radio, other means of communication in the country. It issues propaganda to promote its policies. Its practices strict censorship to silence all opposing views. So much for fascism. The symbol for fascism is a bundle of sticks, a bundle of rods with a hatchet head. Look up the word in the dictionary, encyclopedias, go on the web, and learn more about this symbol called a fascis, F-A-S-C-E-S, a bundle of sticks with a hatchet head. Here in one dictionary, it says fascis, a bundle of rods containing an axe with the blade projecting, worn before the, worn and brawn before Roman magistrates as an emblem of official power. So a fascis was a Roman symbol for political power, Caesar. And the reason why it's a bundle of sticks, because you can break one stick easy, but if you put a bunch of sticks together, it becomes what George Bush calls a coalition. I like that term, a coalition of nations, a coalition of armies. It's not just one army. We have many good people fighting with us. It's a coalition or a group of sticks. Well, here's the coalition of a group of sticks with the hatchet head. We see that symbol on ancient coins. We see it here in pictures in Rome. The fasci is a very famous symbol for the ancient Roman Empire. Here you have um, 
Here it says it's the power of life and death. Um, Pontius Pilate, or the emperor here, were followed by a lictor who held the fasces. This was an axe bound in a bundle of sticks. It symbolized the official's power to punish and execute people. So in ancient Rome, uh, the symbol for power to put you in prison, to kill you, the symbol of the emperor was a fasci, a coalition, so to speak, a group of sticks with a hatchet head. So if you get out of line, they're going to give you the axe. And in reference books on the sacred axe, uh, we have pictures of the sacred axe, the fasci, on the ancient coins. Here's one in uh, 1923 Italy under Benito Mussolini. Here's Cincinnati uh, in the city of Cincinnati holding a fasci. Uh, as I said, fasci have been used in political symbolism and most of the world has no idea in the world what a fascist is. Here it is again. And here's the Romans uh, in a parade carrying the fasces. Here in the United States, um, where the president gives his uh, State of the Union speech, you will see on both sides of the podium a fascist. Because Washington, D.C. represents world fascism. Even on the back of the American dime, on the back of the American dime, you have a fascist. Here in Rome, uh, you have the papal tiara, which is the uh, triple crown, the keys of the uh, the keys of the papacy, the triple crown, and then above the triple crown, you will see the double fasci, a crossing of the fasces. This is a Roman Catholic symbol, crossing Roman fasci. Here it is again. Here it is in Rome. Here it is in the United States Senate. This is why Caesar each morning would go up on the hill to something called Capitoline Hill or Capitol Hill to preside over the Roman Senate. So today we still have the Roman crossing of the fasci in the United States Senate. So here we have uh, a book, a reference book on the symbol of the axe. In Egypt, the axe was a symbol for God. In the ancient Crete, the axe was a symbol for God. In ancient Rome, the axe was God. In Greece, in Germany, the British Isles, even in America, the axe was a symbol for God. And in the Hebrew religion, Jehovah was always pictured also with an axe, the Hebrew God with the axe. But in Rome, which is what we're talking about today, the axe was a symbol for God, the fasces. Now the word fasce, this is interesting, a fasces comes from, and this is a, um, a law dictionary. And in a law dictionary, F-A-S means that which is right or just in the sight of God, as distinguished from J-U-S, which is more frequently refers to that which is right in the aspect of man-made law. So the two words we're dealing with here in Latin, one is J-U-S, just, which gives us that word justice. J-U-S is a word used in relation to man-made laws. But F-A-S is that which is right and just in the sight of God. So it's God's law, is F-A-S. Here's another FAS, divine law or command. So when you're talking about divine law and command, you're talking about God. If you're talking about God, you're talking about the papacy, the Pope, who can bring together many nations into a coalition of nations. Here we have Jesus holding the many sticks together. So fascism and world conflict 
is another facet of the story of the symbol of the fasci, fascism and world conflict. Here's Benito Mussolini, the symbol of the fasci was on his, um, was his main symbol for fascism in Italy during the Second World War. Here's Mussolini on the left, uh, confirmed with all of his international banking cartel friends who were also financing fascism. Here's Mussolini's flag with the fasci. Here is the uh, Mussolini's eagle of the Roman Empire perched upon a fasci. Again, fasci is the word, is the uh, law of God. So, when you're talking about Mussolini using the symbol of the fasci to represent the law of God, well then you're talking about God and his law, you're talking about the Vatican. And this is why... Uh, Benito Mussolini, with all of his fascist dignitaries, went directly to the Pope to get permission and uh, to set up what is called the fascist regime in Italy. Here is Benito Mussolini with some of his high school chums going to see the Holy Father. And let me tell you, there's nothing holy about the Holy Father. This guy is messing around with fascists, murderers, Nazis, drug runners, that's a whole story about the real story of the Vatican. We'll get to that one day soon. But here's Mussolini in the Vatican. And here Mussolini is signing contracts with the Vatican. They were signing treaties and contracts with the Vatican. Here's another, uh, here's another picture of Mussolini at the, in the Vatican signing contracts with the Pope. And here's Vatican City State comes into being, and here you'll see Mussolini with the Vatican dignitaries. So it shows the church and state. This is what America was set up to defend the people against. Collusion between church and state. The Vatican and fascism. You'll see uh, pictures of the Pope with Mussolini. Mussolini had a fascist friend named Adolf Hitler. Hitler was also a fascist. But his form of fascism we call National Socialism or Nazism. And the two of these, Beavis and Butthead, um, both fascists, both murderers, and both crawling on their knees to their master in Rome. <clears throat> Here's Hitler and Mussolini, two fascists during World War II that brought about World War. You'll see the fasci and the swastika for Hitler and Mussolini. You'll see the stamp <clears throat> with both the fasci on one side and the Hitler swastika on the other. So just as Mussolini had to kiss up to the boss of all bosses in Rome... Mussolini had to go to Rome, as I said, and sign contracts to allow him to become a fascist, bloodletting dictator under the auspices of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, so Hitler and his Nazis had to do the same thing. So they had to go sign contracts with the old mob boss in Rome. So we have many, many pictures of Hitler in the Vatican at the time, signing contracts with the Vatican. So the Vatican was always the presiding overseer over fascism, Nazism, wars, bloodshed, drug running, plundering, raping, and killing throughout the whole world. So if you want to know what's going on on the earth, you better check with the Vatican, because that's where it all goes back to. Even Hitler and Mussolini had to first of all pay tribute to the Holy Father, the grand master of all evil on the earth. Here's a concordat contract between the Vatican and the Nazis, right in the Vatican. There's Cardinal Pacelli, who later on, shortly after this, became Pope Pius XII. And you'll see in the Vatican, Nazi officials, 
Nazi officials in the Vatican having tea and crumpets with the most murderous, violent, bloodletting establishment on the face of the earth. He is Goebbels, propaganda minister for Adolf Hitler, with the uh, German cardinal at the Vatican. So the Holy Roman Empire, when we hear that name, Holy Roman Empire, what Hitler, when Hitler spoke of the Third Reich, he means the Third Empire. He was speaking about the restoration of the Holy Roman Catholic Empire of Europe. Here you'll see the papal mitre with the swastika, the Vatican. His pictures coming out of magazines in 1934 of Catholic priests carrying the cross of Hitler, the swastika cross. Here is Hitler and the papal nuncio at their, uh, at their big celebrations. Hitler always had all the top Catholic dignitaries there shaking hands and supporting him. Here he is in the Vatican. And here's a papal nuncio coming from a uh, meeting with Adolf Hitler. Papacy, Adolf Hitler, and Benito Mussolini, and Franco of Spain. So if you're, if you're looking, if you want to know something about World War II, World War I and World War II, you need to go back to the Vatican because that's where it all started, where the boss of all bosses lives. Here's Hitler coming out of church in deep prayer. I always took pictures in front of the church. It looked good. People loved it. Here's a Catholic clergy saluting Hitler. Catholic priest saluting Adolf Hitler. This is a lot of history that the people of America don't know. The Catholic Church was a Nazi organization from day one. They financed Adolf Hitler and they promoted and protected the Nazis. Big story. There's a lot of stuff people don't know. Catholic priests saluting Hitler. Clergy saluting Hitler. Everywhere you look in Europe, you find the clergy and the Nazis always together. Here's uh, one cardinal overseeing Nazi troops. Nazis and Catholic nuns, Catholics giving us the Hitler Nazi salute, straight arm salute, cardinals standing on the podium with all of the Gestapo. People do not realize the Catholic Church is one of the most desperately evil empires on the face of the earth. It's behind Nazism, fascism, all of the destructive wars, violence. It's a hidden dimension in world affairs. Then, of course, we also have him shaking hands with Hitler. Here's a Catholic uh, with their flags, the flag of Christ with this swastika in the middle. Nazis celebrating a Catholic bishop. You'll see up there in the uh, background, you'll see the Catholic... Uh, symbol of the um, Cairo. There's all the German Catholics there under the Nazi flag. There's the SS and the brown shirts attending church. Afterwards they could go out and kill women and children, but they had to go to church first. There's another big mass rally of the uh, people of God, God's chosen people worshiping the Lord under the swastika. It's uh, actually very uh, disgusting 
when once you start seeing how the church the catholic church and the protestant church both were heavily involved in the support and direction of adolf hitler and mussolini they were always there to support hitler Here's the Catholic cardinals shaking hands with the top Nazis and murderers. Here they are in front of their church shaking hands with Hitler. There's a book even called Hitler's Pope, The Secret History of Pope Pius XII. This Pope Pius XII used to go visit Adolf Hitler. This is when Pius, uh, before he became Pius XII, was the papal nuncio and he would go and visit Adolf Hitler to make sure that Hitler got his uh, orders correctly. As I said, the Nazis in church, they were big on going to church. The Nazi cross, Christian cross. Here one of the Holocaust survivors painted a picture of the Vatican Pope and the Nazis together. Also, General Franco of Spain had to bow and kiss the ring. So this is uh, General Franco of Spain with all of his fascist murderers um, going to the Vatican and kneeling and bowing down and kissing the ring of the Pope. should tell you something about the Vatican. When all the murderers, bloodletting murderers of the world, gang leaders of the world, they all go and pay respects to the Holy Father. Then they can go out and murder and kill. kissing the ring of the Pope. Jesuit priest taking up arms against the government. Well, back to Mussolini and the Vatican Euro fascism. Mussolini, Vatican fascism, Vatican meeting with the Pope, and here is as Mussolini on the right, and the clergy, Heiling Hitler, Here's Mussolini visiting the nuns. So, there, as I said, there's so many pictures uh, showing the connection between the Nazi, the fascist, and the Vatican. Vatican priests are always, and in every case, always in the middle of all wars, supporting and promoting tyranny, totalitarian dictatorship, murder, violence. There's just hundreds and hundreds of pictures of which we only have a few here. There's another Vatican Nazi uh, group called Ustashi. This is from Croatia. And here is uh, the Vatican uh, official uh, shaking hands with the... Um, leader of in Croatia of something called Ustashi or Ustashi. The Ustashi was a military Catholic group. Uh, they were very very staunchly Catholic but they were military in Croatia. And here is Adolf Hitler meeting the leader of the uh, Croatian Catholic military There's the Catholic uh, cardinals, priests, with the Ustashi. There's the uh, cardinals and priests and the government of Ustashi. Clergy, there, all the Catholic priests. But who was these Ustashi who were connected directly to the Franciscan order and the Vatican behind the scenes. Well, the Ustashi were, as I said, Croatian Catholics. And there's the uh, Cardinal sitting with uh, all the uh, military officers of Ustashi in Croatia. Here they are in the Vatican meeting with the Pope. 
And just keep in mind, these guys here meeting with the Pope in the Vatican, Ustashi, Croatian, Catholic, Vatican. There was something called the Vatican Rat Line. We'll get into that another time. The Vatican Rat Line was set up by the papacy, by the Vatican, so that when the Second World War was over, the Vatican wanted to get all of their top people, all the top Nazis and fascists, out of, uh, out of Europe so they didn't get killed and put in prison. So the Vatican set up something called the Vatican Rat Line, in which the Vatican gave uh, safe passage, money, false passports, false identification to all the top Nazis to get them out of uh, Europe quickly before uh, the Allies and the Russians got into Germany. So go look up, go do some homework and research on the word Vatican Rat Line. That's a very interesting subject. Adolf Eichmann was uh, gotten out of Germany by the Adolf Eichmann, Klaus Barbie, Joseph Mengele. All of these guys were all uh, protected by the Vatican through something called the Vatican Rat Line. Anyway, <clears throat> the Serbs, Serbian people were encouraged to show respect and love for the Vatican's Holy Father by converting to Catholicism. So the church wanted the Serbian people to those who were not Catholic to convert to Catholicism and therefore the whole country would be Catholic. And here's the forced conversion of Serbians to Catholicism. They had to bow on their knees and agree to become Catholics. Blessing of the new Catholics that have agreed to become Catholics. Because if you didn't convert, this is what you got. Pictures of uh, Eustachi cutting the heads off of people while they're still alive. They take saws and cut your head off. And then they will walk around showing the head that they just cut off. This. It's incredible the kind of, of uh, violence and mentally deranged murder that these Eustachi that the Pope blessed them so they could cut people's heads off, chop their heads off, even in the, uh, even in the church, we see such grotesque stuff. Here this guy's gonna cut this guy's, the other guy's throat and they're holding a plate beneath it so they can take the blood and use it in a ritual. Here, Ustashi is beating non-Catholics in the streets, killing them. Leading them up to pits, throwing them in, and murdering them. Then, putting them into a hole and killing them. Anybody who didn't worship the Holy Father and love the Lord Jesus Christ, and, go to, and, and love the Holy Father at the Vatican, get your head cut off with a saw or murdered. No wonder the Catholic Church has become so great and holy all over the earth is because in Europe, if you didn't join the Catholic Church, you're dead. It kind of reminds me of the Vatican Inquisitions that most people have all forgotten about also. But that's something you don't need to forget about. You better learn about the Inquisitions of the Vatican. <clears throat> this happened during the Middle Ages, early Middle Ages where they would torture people who were not Catholics. And if you weren't a Catholic and you didn't want to join the Catholic Church and worship the Holy Father and worship the Lord, then they would uh, torture you and put you to death. This is the Catholic Church's real history. This is where this stuff really comes from. Hanging people up and down from the ceiling tying people up. This is the Catholic Church, real history. Tying people to, to uh, timbers and burning their bodies while they're still alive, burning them at the stake. Waterboarding, that's where we get the waterboarding, is from the Catholic Church. That was a favorite uh, in Rome, was to waterboard people, pour water down your throat, 
so that you couldn't breathe and uh, torturing you, torturing your body at the same time to make you agree that you love the Lord Jesus and you will turn and be a Catholic because if you don't, God help you. So the Catholic Church is replete with history of burning people, torturing people. cutting, murdering, torturing. And one picture shows the guy with a baby, uh, killing a baby by bouncing his head off of a stone, hanging people and then burning the bodies, nailing people's and cutting into their knees with saws, cutting their, their legs off, tying them upside down and cutting them with, with saws. This is the Catholic Church. This is the rule of Rome, the Holy Father. This is the Inquisitions. The Catholic Church growing in power. This is the way the Catholic Church grew in power. They tortured people until they either confessed or join the Catholic Church. This is the history of fascism, Nazism, totalitarian fascism, and behind it all is the Church. Now back to the symbol of fascism and what this means for you and your family today. FAS is God's God's law, FAS, F-A-S, divine law of command. For over 2,700 years, Rome has dominated Europe. And through Europe, Rome has dominated the entire world. Think about that. For almost 2,700 years, the Roman Empire has dominated Europe, and Europe has dominated the world. So for the last 1,685 years, the popes and the Vatican have been the boss of all bosses, both secular and spiritual, in Europe. So all who rule today in Europe and America by divine right do so through the Holy Father in Rome as a representative of God on earth. This is why today American uh, political leaders such as Condoleezza Rice and Nancy Pelosi and the President Bush as Americans, as, as a representatives of a free people, as Americans, they bow and kiss the ring of a foreign dictator. Does this tell you something about where America is and where it's going? Nancy Pelosi bowing to kiss the ring of a foreign dignitary. That should tell you something about the Bush regime and Condoleezza Rice with her chessy cat grin. All of these people are traitors. Here you will see in Europe the king and queen holding the earth dominated by the cross. So here is how this fascist Roman Vatican plays out in the world today. We start off very simply. This is a very quick concept. We start off with the fact that God is in heaven and he alone owns the earth and the universe. So God owns the heavens and the universe and he also owns the earth and you'll see the earth in his hand with the cross. And one day God had a son. His son's name was Jesus. God's son was named Jesus and one day, of course, Jesus grew up and became a man. Later God's son became king of kings and lord of lords. He's now the king over the earth and over the heavens. <clears throat> Why? Because God the Father created and owns the earth, so he holds the earth in his hands, so to speak. So here is God in heaven holding the earth in his hands. And you'll see the cross dominates the earth. This is why today in Europe, you will find rulers with their symbol of the earth and the cross that dominates. Comes directly from God in heaven. 
So now God's son, Jesus, uh, has been given the right to own and rule the earth and all life on it. For God his father, for God his father. So Jesus has a right to rule the earth any way he chooses. So the earth belongs to Jesus now because God the Father has given it to him. It's his earth and it belongs to him alone. So in fact he is a sovereign over the whole earth. He is a good and kind sovereign, but a sovereign nonetheless. So Jesus owns the whole earth. And it follows that the first responsibility of a sovereign is to lay down the laws for us, his earthly subjects. So therefore, we now have something called God's law, that we have to obey God's law. Those laws would be binding on all people of the earth because those laws are in fact God's law. Moses gives us God's law. But since God's Son, Jesus, is living with his Father in heaven, see, Jesus is now up in heaven with his Father, so somebody has to, someone has to be appointed by God to stand in for and represent the sovereign of the earth, Jesus, and administer his laws and world government for the people of the earth. So therefore, Jesus is now in heaven, but he is the sovereign over the earth. He is the Prince of Peace. And therefore, the uh, papacy is in position now representing God, the Pope represents God, to be the powers behind the thrones. So the papacy and the clergy are always the advisors of kings for Jesus. Since Jesus is not here, the papacy will advise the kings on what is the correct thing to do. This is why you see Bush welcoming the Holy Father so he can kiss the ring and bow down and kiss the ring of a foreign dictator. Is Bush bowing down to the Pope and getting his orders from the Pope. It's actually frightening when you know who these people are and how this stuff really works. If you don't understand how church and government and commerce work, then you're not going to see anything in this. But if you begin to look at this thing, you begin to see there is no division between church and state. The Vatican, papacy, the Holy Father sits right in the Oval Office. Here Bush goes to visit the Pope in his office. <clears throat> And everybody thinks this is so pretty and so nice. Never realizing what this church really represents. Here's Jeb Bush, brother to George Bush, at the Vatican, on his knees before the Holy Father. Which is good. He needs to be on his knees before the Holy Father. And he's knighted in the Knights of Columbus, a Masonic order within the Catholic Church. So it should tell you something about who he is and who he's working for. And there's the Knights of Columbus with their symbol, the fasci, if you'll see the fasci in the middle. The bushes with the Pope. It doesn't matter what side of the uh, political spectrum, as long as everybody remembers who the boss is. Or even Democrats, Republicans, peace and freedom, it doesn't matter what political party, as long as you remember who the boss is. As I, as I said, here's Speaker Nancy Pelosi kissing the ring of the Pope. Both sides, Democrat and Republican with the clergy of the Catholic Church in the middle. There's Bush and Gore with the Cardinal in the middle. Uh, Kennedy and Nixon, Catholic clergy in the middle. Obama, 
with the clergy. Yeah, McCain on one side, Obama on the other, and their master in the middle. And everyone's enjoying themselves, and nobody seems to realize what's really going on here. Tony Blair, who just converted to Catholicism. This may also explain the European Union. Because the European Union, the paperwork for the European Union to bring it into being was signed in Rome. It was signed before a statue of the Pope. So the EU, the European Union, is a Roman Catholic idea signed in Rome under the, under the statue of the Pope. I should tell you something about the EU. Oh, and we don't want to forget the Vatican's Knights of Malta who helped the Pope make all this deception and human carnage possible. So uh, just a few words about the Knights of Malta, Masonic Order in the Catholic Church. It's a military order. It's a sovereign military order of Knights of Malta, which is a Catholic Masonic Order. And here's the symbol for the uh, Masonic Order of Knights of Malta, the Maltese Cross. The Maltese Cross is worn in British wear, the Catholic Cross of Malta. The, how, you know, the, the Queen Mum, Queen Mum, she wears the Knights of Malta Catholic Cross. That tells you who her boss is. Uh, here's um, Kaiser Wilhelm in the 20s wearing the Knights of Cross, the Knights of Malta Cross. Uh, the Germans, the Prussians, all of them wore the Knights of Malta Cross, including uh, Reinhard Galen. That's a whole story in itself, Reinhard Galen, uh, who helped found what we call the CIA, was founded by Knights of Malta, uh, Dulles and Reinhard Galen, uh, a bunch of Knights of Malta Catholic uh, Nazis founded what we call today the CIA. That's another whole story. Here's Reinhard Galen, Knights of Malta. The Knights of Malta cross again with the Hitler swastika in the middle. Veterans of foreign wars in the U.S. Oh, and here's the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury in England wearing the Knights of Malta Cross for the Roman Catholic Church. Knights of Malta Cross on the Archbishop of Canterbury wearing the Nazi Knights of Malta Cross of Rome. I should tell you something about that chump. Maltese Cross, you find it everywhere. Here it is again on a Catholic uh, order. On a Catholic order, you'll see the Knights of Malta Cross. Same headdress that Ku Klux Klan wear, if that tells you anything. And here's um, in New York City. Uh, the guy who would be President of the United States is also a cross-dresser. Knights of Malta. Watches. And in conclusion, I want to look at, for a quick moment at the Vatican Nazi Iron Cross. Now that we've seen some of the Knights of Malta people. Um, the Iron Cross. A heraldic symbol associated with Germany. It's a very ancient symbol from the ancient world, but here it is. It's called, it's a symbol of deity. Here it is in the uh, Knights Templar degree of Freemasonry. The 
Order of the Knights of uh, Templar with the German cross or what we call the German Iron Cross and um, it's on comic books comic book uh, you know masters of the universe wear the Iron Cross the Vatican Iron Cross Knights of Malta Cross even Arco is the um, Iron Cross here it is on in Los Angeles on the fire department the Iron Cross the German not the Iron Cross here the Pope wears it on the Tierra the Iron Cross uh, here is the uh, here's the Pentagon interesting in front of the Pentagon is a helicopter pad the helicopter pad was an Iron Cross Catholic Vatican Nazi Iron Cross as a landing pad at the Pentagon I don't know what that tells you about the Pentagon I should tell you something it's on churches everywhere you'll see the Iron Cross of the German Iron Cross Cal uh, Christians use it everywhere Adolf Hitler used it the British royalty used it Duke and Duchess of Windsor loved to go visit Adolf Hitler. <clears throat> they were Nazis also. Here's the Iron Cross again. Here's the Iron Cross, the German Iron Cross on so-called British royalty. Showing that the British royalty are actually German. But here in America, <clears throat> this is the most important. Here in America, you have... Uh, Catholic and Christian churches, Protestant churches also, using the old German Iron Cross. The Nazi German Iron Cross. And here's the German Nazi Iron Cross in Germany. You will see the swastikas on the caskets. There's a company <clears throat> that uh, sells Christian products and uh, Christian gifts and th this particular series of products by this Christian company is called hardcore Christian decals hardcore Christian and what do we have for a hardcore Christian if it isn't the German Nazi Iron Cross <clears throat> here it is made in the USA Hardcore Christian, Nazi Iron Cross. So what we're being told is that a hardcore Christian is a big time Nazi. Nazism, German Iron Cross, is equated with being a hardcore Christian. No wonder we're having the problems in America today because our people are so profoundly stupid. They have no idea in the world what they're doing. get the point hardcore Christians are Nazis one nation under God all the conspiracy against the human race is made possible by the fascist media and the press fascist media today in America pumps out all that Vatican wants you to know <clears throat> That is the bottom line on fascism.